Sorry. There we are. What's up, what's up, guys? It is episode... Numero, numero... 36. All right. We're getting up there. You know, have we been counting each milestone? Like our 5, then our 10, then our 15, 20? Every episode. We go over the numbers. Only the ages, right? Like 18, 21. Yeah, we did 18. We celebrated 18, 21. We celebrated 32. No, we didn't. We didn't celebrate 42. Did we celebrate 30? Yeah. Are we going to celebrate 40? I want to celebrate 40. I don't know. I want to celebrate 50. I want to get to 50 episodes right now. And then we celebrate. I think getting to 50 episodes is going to be a milestone. And then once we hit 100 episodes, and we will continue giving you guys all this content well today i got a really nice email what was the email the email was thanking us for our bouye which was episode number 35 right yeah 36 35 it was 35 no 34 this is episode 36 and boo and our bouye episode was episode 34 so if you guys haven't gone by to check that episode please do so you're gonna love this amazing little technique that we've been doing bouye bouye so she texts me and she was like, hey guys, I wanted to thank you. The vibe in the home has been super low, but since we heard your podcast, we've been trying it out and the kids are having a blast. It's breaking the tension within the house because she homeschools her kids. So that it breaks the tension in the house. So instead of the boys or the kids fighting, they'll just go, yay, boo. And then the other child kind of stops because they don't want to hear themselves being booed. Yeah, nobody has to get booed. Who really? likes that? Especially kids. Kids hate getting booed. Remember when we first started with Pollux? No, yeah. But remember remember the kids at SKC when when it for whatever reason they would mess up with something or they wouldn't score and anybody would boo them? It was it was it, a, they hate it. That, so those are fighting words. So you get you get what 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 is it? You get preconditioned. Preconditioned to not like booze. But you're conditioned to like yay. So if they scored a kick to the head and you're not getting the yays, but the kick that the kid that kicked you in the head is going everybody's going yay. Boy, that kid who got kicked in the head, he ain't like because you know why? Because that yay was not for him or her. Yeah, that's right. I want to hear yay. Everybody wants to hear yay. I get jealous. Nobody wants no one nobody wants to get booed and everybody wants to be yay. Funny, funny little thing about me. So, you guys know that my husband, he teaches martial arts, martial arts right? Mm-hmm. Right. So, every time he actually goes, yay, I get jealous. You know that, right? You get jealous? Oh, the when I celebrate people? Yeah, I'm like, why, why, am I not, cause... Why, do, why am I not getting the yays? So, and I'm a grown woman, and I understand the whole, you know, th- mental terminology and, and the funny things that go on in the mind. I mean, I'm not a professional. I think I'm at fault just because... Listen, some of the hardest people to teach, it's not because they don't get it. It's just because you expect more from them. So the yays come few and in between when it comes down to martial arts training. Like even with my son, even with you, like I don't commend you as much as I should when you guys do something good. Oh, that's sweet. And and I don't because I tend to be tougher on you guys. And I... How many times did you quit on me on your road to black belt? Oh, at least 50. Well, quit on me all the time because I wasn't, with your own families, you know, you treat them kind of rough when, when it comes down to, to, you know, why are you bending your knee? You know, why are you punching to the middle? But with, you know, with, with students, because you expect them to get it because they're your family, right? <laughs> they, you expect them to completely understand you without you telling them shit, right? Because they're your family members and they should know you by now, right? <laughs> Right, but with with your students from the dojo, hey man, you're doing a good punch, but now just bring that punch more to the middle so it can be better. But with the, I think the words are just straight to the point instead of trying to cuddling. And I and you forget that just because they're your wife or your son or whatnot, they still need that cuddling affection. Yeah. You know, and telling them, hey, and it could be it could be a lot more cuddling. It could be like, man, baby, that was really good. Like you did today. Like I did today. Today he did something sweet. After twenty, I thank you. after twenty years together, uh-huh. I finally <laughs> said something sweet when we were training. <laughs> no, no, he does a lot of sweet things, but today was a nice day. Well, it was today. I was working out, and I actually started. Yes, because I'm at one. I'm twenty pounds over my my goal. 
Mm-hmm. So I want to lose at least 10 of those 20 from now to November to Thanksgiving. Yeah, well, on our last episode, all right, uh, I told you guys how my diet was going. Uh-huh. I had gained two pounds. So I started off at 200 pounds, all right? I gained two pounds, so I went up to 202. So my goal for the first week is to lose between, it was to lose five pounds, which I believe your first five pounds should come off really easy. Like, they should just come right off. You know, if you start eating healthy and you do exercise, they should just come off, right? If you've been eating like shit for the last couple of months, right? You start eating healthy, the weight should come right off. Um, But then what ended up happening was the second day of the first week in, instead of losing weight, I actually gained two pounds. pounds. I went, oh shit, so now I had to lose instead of five, I got to lose seven, right? So now... I'm in my day. We started this on Monday. On Monday, right? Today is Wednesday. We started Thursday. Sunday. We, we started Sat. We started Sunday. So then you then Sunday. And today's Thursday. And today's Wednesday. No. Yesterday was Wednesday. Oh, that's right. Today's Thursday. That's right. So, I lost the two pounds I gained. Plus yay, yay plus four more pounds. So you've lost six. So I've lost six. So I'm one pound away from the original five goal. Without, if you don't count those two pounds that I actually gained two days into my workout. Because for anybody, that's got to be disappointing. Like, all right, you know what? If you're motivated, I'm going to eat healthy all day. I'm not going to eat shit. I'm not going to have, you know, I'm not going to have a beer or I'm, I'm going to stay away from all the bad carbs. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, you gain two pounds. Now, for anybody, that's detrimental. You're like, that's it. I quit. I can't do it. I actually gain weight. Like we say, that's the devil testing you, yeah, tempting you, right? Don't give up. All right, cool. Now I got to lose more. It's okay. I got this. I'm one pound away, and I still have Friday and yeah. Saturday. Yeah, that's great. And today we I did cardio, so it's that's going better. You know, just staying eating healthy, um, no no um, no carbs, sugars, no sugary carbs, no sugar, no no processed foods, none of that. Just healthy eating. Lots of water. And very limited coffee. Yes. So that's good. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So he's doing, he's on his way. I am, I was 136 and I am at 155. Are you at 155? You're welcome. 157 last night. There you go. So starting starting to go back down. That's it. Just the end today you worked out. No, I went up two pounds. Yeah, you see, it always happens. You go up two pounds. So we'll see where we are tonight when I check. Not, you're going to do it tomorrow morning. Or tomorrow. Early in the morning. Without, make sure you pee first because then the results are a lot better. Right? <laughs> Actually, and don't drink water. Right? Don't drink water. Just go straight from bed. Pee. Weigh yourself. That's what I do. That's, you see, I, you, have, you walk around in two ways. You have your wake-up weight, which is after all your food is out of your system, you, you've processed it, uh, you've peed, you, you haven't drank any more water, so you haven't gained to the water weight. That's your wake-up weight. But then... You have a walk around weight, mm-hmm. and the walk around weight is after you drink water, after you have breakfast, after you eat. You know that's what you walk around that, and and I usually go up about a couple of pounds, like three. It can be anywhere between three and five and four. Okay. From moment of wake up to the moment. Now you know what really sucks is when you wake up one morning and you're like, all right, I lost two pounds, and then you fuck it up the weekend, like the weekend comes and you. Like, ah, it's the weekend, I'm going to do this. But you've got to set a goal. You know, and I have a goal that by Thanksgiving, well, yeah. I'm going to be have to. So you have to maintain to your goal, right? So now you, you're you going to go all the way up to, uh, you have a fun weekend. All of a sudden, it took you a week to lose two pounds. Then over the weekend, you gained five. Then that's when, you see, that's what's uh, happening to me. And that's so tough. Because you have that morning croissant, or you have, you know, you, you have hash browns, or you have... What, whatever it is, you know, and, a bagel with a side. Right? If you have stuff like that, it's gonna it's gonna derail you from your goal. And but if you fuck up, don't hang yourself for it. No. Just come right back and keep and keep working on it. But don't yeah. but don't fuck up too much. Because like, don't takes, fuck up every week. It takes twenty one days to establish a habit. Yeah. So if you really if it's something that you want to do, the, it takes twenty one days. So after this, this is what they say. It's never easy, but. After the 21st day, and you're in your 22nd, things now become easier because you've already broken 
the pattern of not being consistent. So are, are, are we expected to be consistent? We're going to try our best. Can it mean we fall off one, one day? It might happen. Do we want to? No. It's not that hard anymore for us. It used to be harder. It used to be harder. Now it's easier. Like, I always feel like you just have to always, like, in order for you to lose weight, you shouldn't starve yourself because it's not healthy either because then, no. you start, then your body just starts eating through the muscle. Yeah. But I think you should always be a little bit hungry. Yeah, and then... Like, you, you should never be stuffed. Exactly. You should never be starving. Exactly. But you should be, a, you should, in order to lose the weight, that means you have to be a little bit hungry. Just a little bit. And that little bit hungry, you know what you need to that to, to quench that little bit of hunger? A quick cookie. A quick this. Because you, you don't go and have a full meal. No. And that little cookie that you eat or that piece of toast bread, that's what brings your weight up. Exactly. For that little bit of hunger. But if you maintain, you know what? I'm okay. I'm just a little bit hungry. Well, but we do something for that. We'll eat some seeds no. or we'll have a, a, a teaspoon of dark chocolate bits. Like or... right now, I'm a little bit hungry. But it's okay. I'm not starving. Yeah. Like starving is different. Like, oh man, I just need a big meal because I'm so no, I just like I would like something small, but that's something small. Sometimes it's hard to come by healthy. Because you go for the cookie or something. Exactly. But because it's an easy go to it's an easy go to. And you say, Ah, you know what? It's just one cookie. But then that's why you also have to prepare your house. Like for example, we make our own little trail mix with seeds. But we grab a teaspoon and we put each of those so we have cranberries. Items. We have so we, cranberries, uh-huh. uh, walnuts, uh, sunflower seeds, sunflower seeds, and um, and cashews, cashews. Yeah. And, and pistachios. Yeah. And then our son, he's actually the lucky one because he can get the ones that are a little bit more starchier. So he'll get sesame sticks with um a, a couple of uh, uh sunflower seeds, and then a little bit of a trail. So mix. a little bit of a little yeah. bit of sugary. Just a bit, and then the rest is healthy. Just he's a kid, yeah. You know, like enjoy it now, dude. Like if you're gonna enjoy it, enjoy it when you're young. And especially now that he's back in school and he's moving, yeah, he needs. A so he needs energy. a little bit more. Not energy. a lot. So he's yeah. not gonna have a whole Twinkie. No, what we do is that we have the tablespoon and we have a t- uh, teaspoon. The measures. Yeah. Exactly. So the sh- the sugary stuff I do it on a tea a teaspoon, and the non sugary stuff I do it on a tablespoon, and then I put it in a little Ziploc bag. I mush it together, not mush it, but I shake it. So now when he grabs it, he's grabbing an array of stuff. He's not just grabbing either trail mix or this and that. You know what he goes for? He goes for the chocolate cheese. Oh yeah, but that those, those taste really good. good. And that's another thing that you can have too if you if you if you have a big sweet tooth, chocolate. I have these little chocolate bits that I eat, freaking amazing. But dark chocolate. Yeah, dark chocolate. It has to be dark chocolate, and at the least sugar, the better. Mm-hmm. So like that, you don't get chunky dunky. Or we usually have some tea with a little bit of honey. And it mm-hmm. kind of gives you that that little edge. The tea at night just makes me use the bathroom too many times at night. And I don't know why. So you're going to have to drink it earlier. Earlier. Like, yeah. like now. now. Yep, yeah, like now. Now would be a good time to have I'm your right, tea. I'll be back. Or I'm going to get it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. Hey, what about that vice president debate this yeah, last night? What do you think? Who do you... Well, it was last night, presidential debate. And it went... I was expecting, I, I don't know what I was expecting. I wasn't expecting, like I was expecting, I got you this, I got you on that. And I thought it was going to be more like the Biden-Trump kind of thing. But you know what? They managed to control themselves, at least the, 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 what, what do you call it? The, what is she? Um, yeah. She's, she's not, a, she's not the mediator. Manager, the mediator, right? She did a pretty decent job in, in controlling the topics and controlling that they stood on time and that, that they, they didn't interrupt each other. But... Who do you think won? Who do you or do you want to go straight there or do you want to go with some points? You well, know the, first, what? Find I, the, I'm gonna do what they did. It was a very interesting situation. <laughs> um, you had two candidates, both vice presidents. You had both going for the vice president. Exact. Sorry, one's a vice president, one's going. He's right. One's she's a senator. She's a senator. Uh, both very highly intelligent people. Um. I don't know. What do you think? I well, did say... Well, here's the thing now, right? You said that exactly so, what they did. I never answered your she question. She never answered the question. Like, no. If you notice, if you look at the debate, they never answer the question. They answer the question sometimes, but a lot of the times, like... Oh, they answer like, each other's question. Or 
they ask one of the candidates a question and then the candidate just starts attacking the other candidate instead of answering what the question at hand is they just start it's just a big blame game it, is that how they see us as the public you know what is that how they see us because right now the only thing people are talking about is a freaking fly landing on the vice president on pence's head and that scares me america because if that's what we are coming out from this debate then, then you didn't pay attention. Problem. You didn't pay. Then you wasn't paying attention to mm -hmm. what they were saying or not saying. Then what's important to you is not the debate. But it's a sign, guys. It's a sign. A, a sign fly. Of what? A fly landed on his. You know what would have been really fucked up if it would have gotten in one of their mouths. That would like if weird. one of those flies. What would? Imagine if they made this kind of mockery over a fly landing on Michael Pence's head. Imagine if one of those flies would have gotten either into Kamala's mouth. Or Pence's mouth. Like that would have been, oh my, that would have been horrible. Imagine going inside one Imagine of the cats. Imagine choking. Can. <laughs> choking. <laughs> and the other one has to run over and get on the Heimlich. They can social distance. And then it comes out, and then it goes to the other mouth. <laughs> oh. <laughs> then you can say they were both talking shit. Then they were both talking. Mm -hmm. But it's like, but do you notice how they speak? That when they're speaking to the general population, like they speak to you like like you're a little kid. Yeah, and they never get to the point, and it was the blame game. Your finger this way, my finger this way, my administration's gonna do this, Miss Administration was how about let's talk about Senator Harris. Country. Senator Harris, uh what would you have done differently during yes. this which has been a question I've been dying to know. I wanted to know what would you guys have done differently during the start of the pandemic? And all she did was blame them. She never came, really came up with a plan. She, she didn't blame them. She blamed Trump. Trump and them. Well, his administration. She was, she was saying. She just kept saying Trump. Of course. Well, he's the he's the he's the face. I understand, but no. But she kept blaming him on 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 allowing over two hundred thousand people to die. She kept blaming him on this, but she never really gave. Um, uh, a plan because they, they don't have one nobody has a plan what's the plan they don't know what guys no one knows what to do <laughs> everybody's trying to freaking figure it out you don't we just send our kids back to school you don't think we're trying to figure it out so no one knows i don't care which administration is in the freaking house so they go ahead and they ask her right and they say what would have been your plan so she says all oh, that she blames trump's administration that they had 200,000 people die because they knew in January 27th. But the question that they asked her was, what would you have done? What would have been your plan? And at the end, she said she would like to have free vaccines for everyone. You didn't have free vaccines then, so that's not a plan. That's and send better medications to the hospitals. Yeah. And she said more tests. We tested a lot of people. We tested a lot. When have you went? When ha I see people getting tested two or three times. We supposedly, according to the to the debate, we've already tested 150, 150 million people, which means that's half of the population already. Yeah. Well, there's been 150 million tests. Tests done. One person could have gotten seven of them. Exactly. Which a lot of people do get because they're in that field where they have to get tested more often. I, I, I assume if you're a public servant or a first responder, you're probably going to be getting tested a lot more because you come in contact with a lot more people. Like and the president's cabinet. Yeah, president's absolutely. Cabinet. But the good thing about them is that they get tested on a weekly basis. And even like that, they still got the world. So the question that they, if they said, you know, we've, we've done 150 million, uh, we, we've had 150 million tests, it doesn't generally mean, like you said, for 150 million Americans, right? Because a lot of people get tested more than once. Absolutely. So you see how they speak to you? And they, they try to, like, manipulate the words and stuff like that a, a little bit. I haven't gotten tested at all. But I haven't had the need to. Exactly. But I assume if I needed to get tested, there would be a test available for me. Absolutely, they would. But, but that's, they, because, that's because we've already learned from the virus. Yeah, but she said that there would be more tests. I know. But like, it but, didn't make sense. But we're, but we're already getting tested, so why wouldn't we... She's uh, saying well, more are, available? No, no. Are the, tests going to stop? That's 
Yeah, are they? Are they? Then she says something about the the our employees. I mean, not the employees, the hospital employees not having enough gear. Who's responsible to get the gear to uh to hospitals? Like, who orders them? Who does the, like who does that? The hospital, I'm, I'm assuming, I right? Know. I don't know that. Okay. The government doesn't send out supplies to hospitals. Are this was she trying to say that they didn't have enough supply available to purchase? Is that it? That's why they told and then everybody knowing, at first. And then knowing in January, so they're saying that he was behind on production. Is that is that the case? No, she said that. I don't get it. I don't understand what she was trying to prove. Well, no, no, but she was saying her main thing was if they knew on January 27th that this was going to become a pandemic. They got warned, but they didn't inform the American people until, on, until on, March. No, she said um, February 12th. Yeah, but March, March is 16th. when everything started shutting down. Got Nothing it. shut down before that. They couldn't. Well, we could have. We don't know. And that's why that month from January to March when everything was still open, yes, they stopped flights from China. Perfect. But the virus was already here. Mm -hmm. And super contagious. And no social distancing. And, you know, um, um, nobody knew much about it. So, oh, yeah, I, we, we had people around us with cause. But we were the rumors were already out there. But nobody was really as concerned as when they just stopped everything. Like basketball from one day games to another. to another. That's what they're saying. But hindsight is 2020. We could have did a lot of things differently. Correct. But how about if this... How about if this uh, this but what, but, infection, or I mean, or this virus would have just been a walk in the park for the United States. Correct, but what she was saying was, why wait until March to inform the the American public, and not be informed in January, and then let people decide how they wanted to pre prepare for the pandemic. A lot of people probably could have prepared for a better. Um, um, and a lot of people business. would have. But that, but it would then. We want, do we want the government to tell us when to prepare or do we want to prepare on our own terms? That's great. But if you want to prepare on your own terms, then you need to stay current to events and not expect people to hand feed you information. Because but we, you but, knew... But we depend on the government to provide us that there's, a, that there's a virus. Listen, there's, if, I'm, if, I, if I'm in... Say we, we own this case here. How about if they didn't know? But they say they were informed. That's the only thing she's saying. They were informed of the of pandemic. What? How do we know? How do how can we look that up? That'd be good to see exactly what was informed to them. I think there was a book released, and that's the book where they said something where Trump said, "Yeah, but I'm not going to tell the American people. I don't want to cause a panic." And he would have. He would have caused the panic. And everybody would have went and ate, bought but everything. But the panic the still happened. Exactly. But it so it still happened. So why do it later than later earlier. than earlier? Like, do, do you prepare for a hurricane while the hurricane's on? Or do you prepare for the hurricane before the hurricane gets there? Okay, so he's those type of people that prepare once the hurricane's about to hit because there when might the, be a chance that the hurricane won't hit. But the hurricane already hit. The hurricane was already hit. People were getting infected. And even with the shutdowns around major cities, the outbreaks were still incredibly big. Yeah, but that's because of a lot of Americans were smacking their chest and saying they were Americans and they could do whatever they want. And then we had those riots. Or was it the riots? Yes. Like everything just kind of happened all at once, but it already had closed down when the riots started. Everything was yeah. already closed down. Mm -hmm. just, the riots just added to, more fuel to the Yeah, fire. but people already had been quarantined for like six weeks mm -hmm. when all the riots started happening. But could we have prepared better? Like, could, like for instance, our business. Could we have prepared our business better to survive? Or to take a better step instead of having to do, you know, kind of from one moment to the other, say, that's it. The, the we're closing shop. Could we have done something better? I, right now, I'm not going to go into it because it, hindsight is 2020. But if they would have told them, hey, listen, and, and this, we just got informed of this virus. It could be potential. It could be a super spreader. It could be. We don't know. We don't know. But it could be, you know, please try to stay away from each other for a few until we learn more about this virus. Or be careful of your Or be down, careful. Stay if, home. Yeah. If you, feel, if you have a cough, high fever. Because if they knew, they know that they have these meetings. So, yes, would it have caused hysteria? It did anyway. Remember how supermarkets were? Mm -hmm. They had police on the line so people wouldn't be cutting. They People ran out of toilet paper. I know. Why toilet paper? People just went after toilet paper.
But so it did, it caused hysteria regardless. It just caused it in the wrong way because now, not only were you scrambling to buy the supplies you needed to stay quarantined, but you're trying to buy as much as you can so you don't have to return like we were. That we, we so, just wanted so to. buying supplies, mm-hmm. all that, right? You because you're going into a quarantine or or whatnot, and but then a lot of people were couldn't go to work. Their kids got sent home. Everything happened at once. It wasn't like a slow transition. It it was like one day was here and one day one day nobody everybody was out doing working, yeah. working do, and then the next day no your kids aren't going back to school and everything is closed. It could have been a warning. That's that's what you represent us. Whether it's good or bad, let us deal with it. But a panic happened regardless. But if they could have presented it in a different way. Yeah, it would have been better. It would have been better. But it doesn't mean that by blaming Trump that she had a better plan or she would have well could she have would she have warned us prior? I and, bet okay. you they probably wouldn't have. They probably they, wouldn't have either. They, you know why? Because they, 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 they don't want to they don't want to cause panic. It's the right thing to do. Yeah. Actually, it's the right thing to do. Would you tell you, I know why. Because they see us as children. We're kids. We, we panic. Why? We get because scared. What's the first thing you do with your kid? You don't tell them. No, you don't tell your kid. You don't want to hurt them. You yeah. don't want them to get scared. You tell them once the shit hit the fan. Yeah. Listen, we got to go. This Johnny, is happening. We're going. This is happening. Because you don't want to stress them out. They see us as kids. They see it. <gasps> Listen, the, everybody's talking about the fly landing on Pence's head, but we're the. We're the flying. We're flying right into a trap. Regardless who 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 wins, like we're in their trap, and they're just trying to catch us for their vote, so they can be in charge for four years because exactly. they want to be because they so want to be in can, charge. They can figure out where the we're money the flies, is. and yeah. we're going into a flight trap. That's it. And and yes, they're not gonna listen. It, I don't think if Biden would have been president, or no, or if the or, if the, or Obama or Hillary, they would have told us. No. If Hillary would have been president, not Trump, because it was only them two. Clinton would have been like, "Lady, you want big fool in there? No, you th- think you're gonna go ahead and kill the American?" And I get it. Listen, I spoke to uh, I spoke to my to my family member from from another country, and 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 I told him, "Listen, they're gonna have to shut down the economy." No, it's gonna crash the markets. I said, "I know." And what ended up happening? They closed on everything. Yeah. The bar- they it, it, now except the banks. They didn't close the banks because the banks were still able to charge 100 percent of their mm-hmm. of their loans. Uh, here's another thing: Why are some businesses allowed to fail? Like Regal. Regal's going out of business. That's sad. Regal, right? Movie theaters. Okay. I like Regal. I like Regal too. We we went there. I, we also like Regal because it was very convenient. Because <laughs> so, if it would have been United or Cinemas, we would probably I love United and Cinemas. We probably would have loved United Cinemas. Like, which one's closer? We had two, right? We, which we, other one was the closest? Right? And we even had the Regal card. Anyway, <laughs> we used to get free popcorn. free popcorn every time we went, <laughs> trying to get us fat. Anyway, small. You upgrade, you go to large. 25 cents. 20, 50. 50. 50 cents. Only 50 cents. And a Coke every so often. All right, fuck it. Bring it up. <laughs> we <We'll> share. <laughs> Not ice. <laughs> anyway, so why is a company like Regal mm-hmm. not allowed to open up because of social distancing? It's an enclosed environment, but yet airplanes. I hear that they're completely stacked. Oh yeah, I hear that people elbow they, side to side, elbow side to side, and they're allowed to continue. Why do they get these huge bailouts? Like, but and are allowed to continue doing business. Like why the airline industry? Because it, it it brings it brings monetary compensation to cities by traveling to them. It you know yeah, it's, it's like a, it's a is there a industry. huge tax behind it that the government makes a lot? Because how much is taxes on a on a flight? A lot of money. Taxes are expensive, and it right? Depends if you're going like international. They have international tax. So everybody has a tax. So you so you cannot even leave the before you, you. So you have to pay to leave the country. Oh yeah. Because so take. Because if you don't pay, you you can pay for your flight. But if you don't pay the tax, that means you can't fly. So you have to pay. You you have to pay to get permission to fly. Yeah, you gotta pay to play. All right. So they're not allowed to fail. The banks are not allowed to fail. But New York is shutting down right now. Restaurants again, supposedly, because of hotspots going on. They're yeah. gonna be shutting down uh, restaurants, bars all over again, and even some schools. Well, look at here. 
we started on Wednesday. On Wednesday. On Monday. No, Monday. Cause That's right. Came. We started on Monday, and today it's is Thursday. Thursday right. And a school just got... And an elementary school got a COVID-19 positive case. I don't case. want that email. They don't even call you. They, they send, send you an email. An email. Uh, your son or your student has come across and contact, or they do trace... Uh, what is it? Um, tracing? Trace Contact tracing. Contact tracing. And... Which... Uh, Imagine. Fuck. Wow. Listen, parents, you got to sit down and talk to your kids, man. You got to sit down and talk to your kids. And listen, I'm letting you go to school. You're going to school. We, we had the conversation with our son. Listen, I'm going to let you go back to school because yeah. you want to go back to school. And he's enjoying it. I think the kids need it. And yes, they're the least at risk right now, right? The teachers, on the other hand, are more at risk because a lot of these teachers are not even doing their PE with their freaking kids. They just put a YouTube <laughs> video on. So you know they're freaking out of shape, right? And they're more at risk. But then kids going back home, when once they get home, how about once they go to an after school? Because a lot of them can't even go back home. A lot of them still That's are going scary. to after school. So they have to go through a lot of people to then come home. And not only that, your child has to keep that mask on from the moment they're in school, they get to take it off for lunch, and then they have to put it back on, and then when they go to the after school, what's happening at the after schools? At the after schools, are they letting the, the mask come off, or are, they let, or are they keeping the mask on? Well, this is the thing. If, in my opinion, only in my opinion, if they keep their mask on, social distancing, people respect it, especially the older ones, they're going to be easier at that. Then they're gonna be fine. Get don't get close to the teacher. Follow the rules. Yeah. Follow the rules. Follow the rules. Even when our son comes home, he jumps into the shower and takes a shower. It's in the shower. Yeah. He he does whatever he needs to do to make sure that he cleans himself off. We told I, them we're we're higher risk than you are. So by you bringing something to this house, we can because we're in our forties. Yeah. It's not. To and today, Grandpa went to pick him up with us, and they didn't even hug or anything. He just gave him a nice little a pound. Uh, elbow, elbow, yeah. elbow pound, and that that was it until he came home, took a shower. So that's what we're doing. So parents try to stay on top of your kids. Now, after school programs, that's scary because I've already seen a couple of commercials, and I don't know how the schools are doing it, but it has to be really hard because your guard goes down. You've been in school since eight. To three. Technically, you switch that mentality from school to after school. And after school, in the most sense, has always been a fun For thing us, it do. always has. Right? So you get there, you know, you uh, they have to have a snack. And a lot of these places don't. If they have an outdoor sitting area, great. If they don't, it's... Then they have to eat in a cafeteria. Then they have to eat it, which means their masks have to come off again. They have to eat it. When you're eating, spits going all over the place and stuff like that, right? Then they come out, then they have to do... Homework and games and stuff like that. How are they playing these games? Are they playing them with a the mask on? I, I don't know because I saw a place that was just had about like si like sixteen kids on a mat, and a the mat wasn't that big. There was no social distancing. They had no masks, and they were literally punching and and screaming wrestling and each other, crying yep. and screaming. And so in the schools, they're following the rules, but once they get to these after school programs, you know, it, it gets. Kind of tricky because they don't have to follow by the same guidelines, or maybe they're not as worried as the school is. Exactly. So they may not. So now the kid doesn't even catch it in the school. He's catching it somewhere else, and, and, and then in an extracurricular activity after school, then he they, brings it home and brings then he it brings home, it to school. Then he brings it to school, and it's not even the poor school's fault. It wasn't even the school's fault. So, so you got to talk to your kids. You got to yeah. talk to them and tell them, hey, li listen, it's it's serious. Please keep your mask on. And I have, of course, it's going to be a lot harder if you have a pre-K or you have a first grader or you have a, a second grader, like young elementary school kids. I think um, middle schoolers and high schoolers can probably understand more, maybe the first week that they're going to really understand, two weeks. But after that, I don't think yeah, they're going to I do too. I think that everybody's going to start gravitating. You know what? I've them. seen you for the last month. Come on. I don't. At that age, think about your the smartest I don't know because I see Paulix walking really far from all the kids. Yeah, like, like I said, it's the first week. Yeah. Right? So, but they've been together for a month. Let's say two months already in into the school. Ah, I've been seeing you every day. I'm not sick. Are you sick? You're not sick, no. You're not sick. All right. So Anybody you know else sick? No. All right. All right, cool. So now we can talk. We'll but, work together. But, or we can just talk. Yeah. And hang out. Or kiss. Hey. 
When did you first get your first kiss? It was about around middle school. Everybody starts kissing. That's the reason we had to take out all the kids from our from our after yeah. school program from middle school because all they wanted to do was kiss, 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 and I couldn't have the little guys watching those guys do that. <laughs> so that, we had them there for one after school, and after like the first like after a month, a month and a half, once. Like, they settled into middle school. We had to completely separate them from everybody else because the way they spoke, the way they they wanted to have boyfriend and girlfriends, we would have to have a coach literally just standing by them so they wouldn't be doing anything stupid yeah. or fun. And for them, fun. For us, fun at that age. But since we're adults now, we call it stupid. It's stupid. You don't do that. Uh, uh, you don't do that. <laughs> but when you don't get caught, yay. Yay. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna see if one day you guys see my husband's George Bush laugh. Uh, <laughs> got the George Bush. Laugh. <laughs> no, not like that. He doesn't laugh like that. I'm uh, just saying he does the laugh and then he jerks the shoulders. That's what I just did. Yeah, but you did it like in a silly way. No, I'm not saying you look silly. Uh, I'm saying you have the same head. Oh yeah. Uh, so even yeah. though that was a poor president, they freaking mocked. Is he a Republican too? He's a Republican. <laughs> George Bush was a and his that, father. That's probably why. It was, his father was a badass. Right? His father was the bad. He, the father was the one running the show. Yeah, his father was a That badass. was the head of the CIA at one point. That, that man, man must have been like, they tried to kill my son? Oh. That man, that man was the real deal. Like, he was. He, was he looked it, though. He was skydiving at 80, 90. He, he, look, he looked like the real deal. He was a real deal. Tall man. He was a real deal. Real, real deal, dude. Trump is tall. Trump is like six foot. Yeah, Trump looks like a, a, a football player. He's a linebacker. linebacker. See that back that man has? I have a big back. That man's a big dude, man. Six four. Still walks. Listen, like him or not, look at his gait. Yeah, like man. When, That's when a powerful he, man. When he walks, he's walking like like he's running shit. Whether you like him or not. Yeah. Like, you gotta, you gotta, because you've seen some 74 year olds and not a lot of 74 year olds no, no, that are walking. Man good. And he's overweight, right? But, he's, but he carries it well. When he stands is when I don't like it too much because he's kind of leaning forward because his belly flops him over a little bit, right? <laughs> no, you see, him. he kind of leans. And then after that, he but, straightens up. But when he walks, he has a good gait. Yeah, like he doesn't he, walk forward with no, his head forward. No, he, he walks straight. He, he, he has a good gait for a 74-year-old man. And even coming out of COVID, when he exited the, the helicopter, of course, it was all publicity stunt. Yeah, come on. The, the guy, look, he just needs one take. Right? He needs one take. That man, uh, he's been around the movies. He was in different strokes back in the day. So he's been in the Hollywood scene for a long time as well. He knows and what... And then he sat in that table and fired a lot he of had people. A, he had an NBC show. And listen, and it was a number one. But listen, a smart man like that, you're seeing the tactics used by TV to be able to bring the audience on your side. And... He's a smart man. He'll pick it up quick. Oh, so that's all I have to say? That's all I have to do? All right. Yeah, I can get that done in one take. And, of course, practice, practice, yes. practice. Because yes. I bet you when he was doing the show, you, you really, you, do you really think he wants to do five, six takes of the not, same scene? Not on his time. No, no, no. He's, he, I got to go. Yeah, well, I want to do this. So yeah. I'm going to do this. And at first, he probably fucked it up. But with practice, he made it better and better and better. And, and now, he's a pro. He... Listen, in one take, think about this. He only had one chance to do this because media was watching, everybody was watching. Come out of that helicopter, walk across the lawn, go inside the White House, come outside of the White House, go into the balcony, remove his mask, salute America, America, and then and go, back go back inside. Well, that's all one take. Then he comes out to the lawn again and he does a, 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 a talk on Twitter for everyone to, to hear and see. And that's when he said, you know, don't worry about COVID. Don't let it ruin. Uh, don't let it control your life and stuff like that. Only yeah. one take. Yeah. That's that's one take. And and he understands what it, it takes, takes to to sell and entertain. Because at the end of the day, these guys, these people are entertaining. They are. Right. We watch. Why do we watch? We watch these debates not just because we want to hear what they're saying and they're not saying shit because we, they ask them a question and they just tell them. Well, let me tell you a little story that I met this lady and this and okay, but what about the question about what would you have done differently? His fault. <laughs> America, his fault. Yeah. America, let me talk to you. I don't know what they're talking about. 
But we asked you the question. Yeah, but we have no idea what she's talking about. <laughs> they just start blaming each other. It's like a blame game. And 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 we freaking fall for it. They said they <laughs> Did touch you like him. the part? Did you like the part where they talked about uh, uh the taxes and how Trump has lowered taxes for for the wealthy and then Oh yeah, she she asked them the question. Susan asked him yeah. the question. And and then Carmela goes Kamala. Kamala. What did she say? She went uh they, they asked her a question about bringing jobs back and, and the economy and how to, how many more jobs do you think they're going to be able to have? She goes, well, uh, Biden will not be raising taxes, taxes for, to the people who, who earn less than $400,000 a year. Um, but that wasn't the question. But she wanted, she needed to say something that the American public, that the majority of the American public can, make relate, less, to. can relate to. Wait a minute. Well, she's, listen. She said, if you don't make, how much you make? How much, how much you make, Johnny? 25,000. 35,000, 45,000. Yeah, you, you vote for her. She ain't going to raise the taxes. But, but that's not what is being said. And that's not, you know, that's not what the, what the Republicans say. They say, we are not, we are actually going to give back money in taxes. So they're not even saying uh, the, the, he didn't even sell the lowering taxes. He he's talking about how much money they got back. So who do you think won the debate? In your opinion, I think Michael Pence, Pence won. I won. think Michael Pence Regardless, won because she got... couldn't really, um, she didn't answer certain questions. What she did most was blame. She played the blame game. Her attitude was very sassy. I don't think she was doing I like the things, attitude. Yeah, I don't think she was doing things with a humble intention. I think she was trying to prove points and that's not why you go there. You go there to be open, you go there to tell what America, what's next. And I have no idea what they're gonna do next in anything. So because even when they were asked about infrastructure or what they were gonna do with the money that they were posing, right? It was something to do with money and they said that they were going to bring more jobs to America and that the way they were going to do that was that they were going to focus on infrastructure. And they both don't want to frack, but they do want but to... They do, but they have to frack because if they don't frack, we're fracked. So, but then Biden is saying that he's not going to frack, but then she just said they are. They're going to frack, yeah. So... What is you, it? Just, it's, they're just saying everything we want to hear. Yeah, because it's going to be best for you to hear... My point and why it's everybody else's fault and not our fault. So when we take office and everything goes to shit, don't worry about it because it was already his fault. So it's not my fault. Yeah, and then they. Oh blame. man, that's not everybody, what I want. Everybody, I want... everybody's always blaming the previous administration and like right now, like even even with Trump, when like when Trump something uh, like something uh, goes bad, they blame Obama. Oh, Obama. Obama. But when Obama. something goes good, it's Trump. It's Trump. Yeah. <laughs> but even I think Trump said that he took some things and ran with them. So, so he's trying to repel the Obamacare Act and and do something different, but it was kind of very similar. Can I, regardless, like they both doing the same thing. Exactly, just with one. Is they gonna, just change one a little two things to it, and but it's the same shit from, from both sides. To to be to be clearly honest, because the the presidential debate, uh, I thought it was kind of a tie. If, the only problem with, that Trump had was that that Trump. Fucked up and said what he said. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, stand back and stand by. Mm -hmm. You know, like, he couldn't denounce white supremacy. He just didn't do it. So, I think that messed him up. And I think it was kind of a tie on that one. And But on this one, I, I, I think Pence won. I thought Biden was going to do a lot worse when he debated Trump. I thought he was going to be Sleepy Joe. But no, yeah, I think he defended himself. He Pretty did, well. He did very well. Uh, but on... On this one, I really think Pence just blew her out the water. He was well, very yeah. calm and collective, even with the fly landing on his head. And he, it doesn't matter. And he spoke like with sincerity, and and he did attack, not yeah, attack. I didn't he like, did I didn't like her points. attitude. She was always. He did hit the points, and he and he was very respectful. Yeah, he was respectful. Did yeah. not um, congratulate her and everything. Congratulate. Oh, but is that? Hey, shit? listen. No, no, wait, wait. Whether sarcastic or not. Can I say something? She congratulated herself. I found that to be super annoying because you don't need to tell me all the degrees and how you you were elected and how you're the second. This has nothing to do with being the second African or being the second woman or being the second minority. That we're past that. 
You see, that's the problem. We tend to bring up things that were past. You're a senator. It doesn't matter if you're a woman. It doesn't matter if you're black. It doesn't matter if you're white. Why are we focusing on that? Like, that didn't even make sense. I got offended as a Latina woman. Why? Because what's the point? You were the first woman sen- or the second woman senator to be selected. And what are you trying to say? That women don't get selected for certain positions? How about if women haven't wanted to have those positions? Have what? So what know. So what makes her special? That's not special. Uh, an accomplishment, great. But there's women out there running empires. I don't I don't see are, are we do we think we're that behind? Do you get what I'm saying? In America, are are, are you no. no. She has a position. So I'm like, why are you tooting your own horn? We should know what you did and what you do. Unless we're that dumb and we didn't. That we like to celebrate. Yay, to ourselves. To ourselves. We like no. to celebrate ourselves. Everybody. That's why Instagram is so big. Everybody's celebrating themselves. Listen, when you post a picture up, you're celebrating yourself. Yeah. I, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're celebrating yourself. You're celebrating those yourself or the world you see. And that's and that's the kind of world we've kind of come to. You know, every every action you do, my kid started first grade. Yay. I'm gonna celebrate. But every kid starts first grade. Like my we put a picture up of our kid of going course, to, to, to middle school, first day in school, right? Hey, we celebrate ourselves because if you should celebrate yourself. Unless she was just giving information on why she is why she could be the at, vice president. Technically, at the end of the day, I think she should say that because she is applying for a job. She needs to provide her resume. You know what? To the American people. It, I agree. Because like, it is an interview. If that makes that that makes sense, but it could have been presented differently. It could have been pre- presented more as her accomplishment as an entirety, not because she's a minority and a woman. Just becoming a senator is a is a accomplishment. You're a woman and you're a minority, so does that discredit her? I don't get it. Like when I go and I I say I own SKC or I own SKC Live, I don't say I'm the first woman to own. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I don't have to pride myself in that. But what if you were the first woman? You think I would say that? I don't know. You gotta celebrate yourself, and people. Then the people don't know. You got to keep, you got to let people know. Sometimes you got to let people know. So I don't think it was appropriate for the for the current um for debate. But anyway, she went off on that. She is interviewing. And Inter- but that wasn't the question that was asked. Nobody well, ever asked her that question to share. Yeah, but they did that throughout the whole debate. The whole debate, they were they would ask them a question and they would just answer whatever the fuck they wanted to answer. <laughs> they weren't answering any. Sometimes they wouldn't even answer the questions at hand. They would just start attacking each other. You know, you know exactly attacking and just going back and forth on why the other person is at fault. That's what they did. But you know, I did write some points that I didn't hear of. I would have loved to hear how we can create jobs, but not the government creating the jobs for us and wasting our trillions of dollars. How about creating programs that allow us entrepreneurs and people out there more funding or more help on building programs and businesses for us. I would like to hear that. Well, guess what, guys? We're going to be doing more funding, and we're going to be helping more people open up businesses. Yes, but then that's not a big... with Whether the majority of the people are not mainly entrepreneurs, the majority of the people can't see themselves doing that, and so they're not mixture. appealing to that... The majority of people who are going to go out there and vote are the ones who make less than $400,000 a year. Are the people who are not looking, they just want a stable job here in the, in the United States. That A lot of them are not, a lot of people don't have the entrepreneurial spirit. I get it. And, and that makes sense. And you're not appealing. So you start talking to them, you go, okay, but I don't want that. How can I keep my job at the plant? But that's what I want to know. Exactly. You know, that's providing for me and I'm happy and in 20 years I'm going to retire from that that's true. and I'm going to be okay. Okay, so let's take that out. We didn't have to hear about jobs and how you were going to stimulate the economy with small businesses. Because you're right. There's that out. How about health? How about teaching us how to take care of our own health? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to take out another big industry, the health industry. Got it. And with a lot of jobs. Right now, 
with okay, COVID-19. So they just want to speak about that people want to hear on hospitals and what kind so of So we're not going to teach vaccine. you guys how to take care of yourselves and be healthy. So like that, when there is another pandemic, we won't have to worry so much because we won't get as sick. But we'll just go ahead and feed you some vaccines and just some the easy way out. Got it. Okay. So yeah, that's how they go. All right. How about them teaching us how to produce and grow our own food? Well, how about plans about that? They they speak about farming, and helping those companies farm better and giving them better pesticides to be able to. But I don't clean. want pesticides. I want better farming products. That's a distinction. They, they don't believe that shit. They're okay. Not science. So there we go. So that's not science. So they only believe in science. Yeah, and that's what the scary part was because we need to go back to old farming practices. A lot of people are getting sick, but they wouldn't do that because then it would wipe out a whole industry of health. Because if everybody was healthy, how many, how much would you need? Listen, farming is hard. It's super hard. Farming is hard. It's super hard. Yeah, I know. It's hard to do. And if you do. live in an area that gets cold and hot, it's even harder. But, like, th there's a lot of work behind it. You know it. what? I'm going to stop us there. Do we think it's hard because we've never done it? Or do we think it's hard because it is very laborious? It's la It's a laborious um, lifestyle, man. I think feed is a laborious lifestyle. Like, like, uh, cows, yes, goats, but, pigs. But we're easy at doing monotonous jobs where we don't even have to think about it anymore. That's People, true. thinking is hard. Well, think, you only get a certain amount of, uh, amount of thoughts answers to questions. Yes. You get answers. to make a couple of decisions a day on a regular basis. And, and farming is not just, I think, fields like that. Where you have to take into account and you have to see, you know, am I going to plant it now? Is the weather right? That's a decision being made that can fuck up your whole crop. You know, it, taking it out too soon, taking it out too late. And these are decisions that people don't want to make because thinking is hard. So they'd rather have a job. Okay, what do I have to do? I have to move yeah. this to here all the time. Perfect. I don't want to think because I want everybody to do the thinking for me. Yeah, but that messes us up because we give away a lot of power. Yeah, and, and then people yeah. are okay with that. People are okay with that. People like to think that they don't want to give the power away, but they're giving it away here. Constantly. They're giving it away constantly because if you don't know how to grow your own food, you're letting somebody else grow it for you. And if they tell you there's no none of that food that year, then you don't eat that food that You don't eat that You don't eat it. If they tell you stop eating this because of, of a bacteria, you stop eating it. You do whatever they tell you to do, mm -hmm. right? But if you grow it yourself, you'll be like, okay, you guys have the bacteria in your... In your is there there's E. coli in your spinach. But mine's is but mine's in is, my backyard. Mine's in my backyard. Mine doesn't have no E. coli. Gotta go wash it. Yeah, mine three times. No, but mine's is good. It's not it's not really a, a something you have to think about. No, because it's whatever they put into the into the ground that causes. So what I'm coli. saying is that they make all the decisions for you. You like to believe that oh no I'm I'm free and I make my own decisions. No, every decision is being made for you and and that's how the majority. Of, of the United States, States likes it. Yeah. Tell me what I'm gonna watch. Tell me what movie. You're not out there creating movies. Tell me what time I'm gonna do it. At what yeah. you're gonna tell me what time I come in and yeah. what time I leave. And you're gonna tell me what time I eat lunch. And you're gonna tell me what time I have my breaks. Yeah. yeah. And you're gonna and and you're gonna tell me if I can open up my business or I can. And the minute you tell me I cannot, I don't do it. And the day you tell me I have to wear a mask, I do it. And the day you tell me I don't, I don't have to wear a mask anymore. I don't do it anymore. So we are all just we're, we're we're all conditioned to just follow and not making decisions and if my job is a job that i can just press a button a couple of times a day and now i can just go into la la land or dreamland or hear or hear a an awesome podcast like like this one right yes, Casey. and and enjoy it right hey li listen it's it's it, it's okay if that's for you I said but, Casey. but do you can got your ticket yes and and that's okay if that's what you want to do with your that's life right. that's totally cool who, who am i to tell you you shouldn't do that Listen, knock yourself out and you don't have to make hard choices in your life and your life is easy and it goes by nice and cool. Go for it, man. Live it up. Absolutely. But if you're a person that likes to take risks and likes to take big decisions on a daily basis and that likes to create and that likes to, you know, uh, uh, just just experiment and have and, and live a life that might be a little bit more stressful. Yeah, might. You know, it will be. But that's with the life more responsibility, yeah, with more do responsibility it. Well, do comes you. stress. Yeah, it's your life. Heck yeah. You know, and if you want to go out there and grow your own vegetables and garden, you can do it. If you don't choose to, you don't have to do it. Just, but just understand that. Just go to the supermarket. Just understand that when there's an E. coli outbreak on, on your spinach. No spinach no, for you. No spinach for you. Why? Do you grow your own spinach? No. Can't. 
can't buy spinach now. <laughs> it is what that it is. There's mad cow disease going around. Oh, you don't hunt? All right, then I guess there's no beef for you today, right? That's right. But if you hunt and you go out and you get your own game, you can bring it back, put it in the freezer. Storage is, is great. The electricity goes out. Right now, we would be shit out of luck. Why? Because we don't have solar panels. That's right. Right? But that's our choice right now. But if we have solar panels, we'll probably have electricity in our house. Like, oh, no, your power went out. My power is good. Yeah, my I power have, might have, be going right back up. So everybody has a choice or, and but everything costs money. Everything costs money. Everything costs money. And then now to my next topic. Very well. Thank you for leading us into the next topic. <laughs> that's how the presentation <laughs> was. Clean energy. We didn't hear anything about that. They spoke, just kept... they spoke about the fracking and they spoke about fossil fuels and no. how the climate change and stuff Yeah, like but that. no one went into detail on what they're going to do with it. Nobody said. Nobody has a plan. They just blame each other. He did this and did this that created this much more emissions in my state. I have First a plan. thing's burning. I have a plan. I don't know what the plan is yet because we still haven't had the problem. But there's a plan. <laughs> Her state's burning. But you know what? I saw I saw a post of a girl that wrote get got out of California and when I read that I said oh, Katsu, you want me out of California? Here you go, burn. They got the parents out of the schools. Because that they finally did. They finally, they they, finally they got they the fought and so fought before and this fought. whole pandemic started, right? Before this whole pandemic started, it was very hard now to even walk your kids inside of the school. Like, it wasn't even allowed. Why? Because, because of, of a shooter, because of this. So now, one shooter happened, and now parents are punished. They didn't want the parents inside. Now, you cannot even walk them to the front of the door of the building. You have to kind of let them walk in by themselves. They don't want any parents going past a certain point, at least here in Dade County. At least here in Dade County. Exactly. In the school that we can't our son, about, that yeah. our, son, our son goes to. But they finally got the parent out and the kids back in alone you know where they now can mow them yes there's going to be parents like the pta and stuff like that but they're not in the classrooms no you don't we don't know what's going on we kind of hear the the curriculum but you don't know what's being planted but how many yeah now parents are just are not allowed they listen now your kid is my kid you cannot pass this door because once he goes in oh and if you want to get him out i, I, I have to just to send him out i have to i have to do a whole bunch of stuff okay that's because you want to make sure that not anybody can take on your kid, right? And, and now they're really supposed to know every single parent of the school. Yeah, that's your job. Yeah, show me ID. We we and we, just... we 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 asked for ID, but it's like they finally took the kids kind of away from you during this pandemic, and they and once they're there, they control them. You have to do this, this, and this, and you cannot do this and this and this, and you have to wear this on your face so you can't breathe. And there's nothing much you can say or do. You can keep them out of school and homeschooling. How how fun was that for a lot of parents? It's was it, tough. It's tough. It's tough. And working, mm -hmm. going to work, and keeping and making and making food and taking care of the house and going food shopping. Yeah, because how many parents were really able to work while their kid was home in school? Oh I bet you the kids were. I bet you the kids were. Mom, mom. Mom, I'm hungry. Frosted the flakes. <laughs> we milk. The milk. <laughs> ah! <laughs> God damn it. And the teacher, and the teacher's like, Johnny, okay. mute your computer. Mute your computer. <laughs> Dad, <laughs> where's <laughs> mom? <laughs> Tell mom. <laughs> I'm in class. Oh my yeah, god! And and a lot of parents are not really checking kids' homeworks. They kind of yeah. let them do so. You're not even seeing what kids. Some of these kids are learning. Yes, there's a lot of great parents out there who do check. They go through the homework. They do this, and we see that a lot. But we also see parents that uh, haven't looked through the book bag. They don't look. Months. No, they don't look. Yeah, they have no idea. And then when they get to uh, um, report uh, cards, report card. Really? Yeah. Now you, you tell yeah, me. You never checked, mom, dad. <laughs> Mom, why didn't you check his homework? <laughs> of course, we're gonna. We're always gonna blame mom. Mom I, has to I go in there. I my son's homework, yeah. and I sit with him and do it. Yeah. So. She does it for him. No. Yeah, <laughs> practically, he's in sixth grade. 
He doesn't know any better. Who's he kissing 12? He could do Listen, more. we help him out and we work in a team, right? So sometimes he has to do presentations. I help him out with the presentations since mm-hmm. I, I know how to do it quick. He gives me the idea. Mm-hmm. And you work with and him. I, show and him I, how to do it. And I work with it so he can see it, so he can see it done. Because, um, listen, not, not, none of those projects that your kids be presenting in school are coming from the kid himself. I've seen some badass projects. I'm like, nah, your kid didn't do that. Your kid is drooling <laughs> on himself as he's eating. He's spilling food. There's no way he made that three story freaking tiki hut. Yeah, no. With, uh, remember that one? That thing was dope. Freaking dad's an architect. That's an architect. Now imagine the freaking Indian tiki hut that he came up. My poor kid had a tiki <laughs> hut. <laughs> hold it! You gotta you gotta hold it from the side. It'll fall. And and face it away from the wind. It was badass though. We made it with twigs. We made it with twigs. We made it with made twigs, it and then his his <laughs> roof we did with. But twigs. once we got to the school, and that kid had like a freaking. You saw his river. Yeah, the river on the side. Yeah, but his river looked like freaking three D. Mine looked one D. It Flat. looked it looked <laughs> amazing. No, it it looked freaking great, right? And once I saw that, I said, "All right, bitches," because we kind of let him do it. We kind of helped him and guided him a little bit, but... No, that was all me. It was horrible. It looked like a first grader did it. <laughs> he wasn't first grade. He had to like no, that. he was in fourth. Fourth. Anyway, then after that, he had to do like a, like a, 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 pre, a digital presentation. Uh-huh. And I said, okay, these parents are doing their work. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my, my, my design skills to work, and I'm going to go ahead and give them a nice project. And... It was it was the freaking center of attention on that one, right? It had nice print, it had nice, nice colors, good nice fonts digital. and everything. Yeah, he did a great job on that one. Yeah, he did. A, he got an A. Well, I got an A. All right. And I, then we did a Columbia project that we let him do. Yeah, we, we had remember. It yeah, we went and painted it. Yeah, we should have just freaking printed them really nice. We printed some some stuff. No, but not the Columbia oh, one. No, no, he we wanted did. to yeah, paint it, to and that. then we had to do a freaking movie. His was the only one that was like road dogs. Legitly done by him. Yeah, we we want him to do it, and a lot of just I think like only a couple of projects that, where we actually kind of took the lead role because we knew he couldn't do it, or, or he just wasn't really into it. But he had to do it anyway. I have to help him. His writing is not the best, and it's because he writes the way he speaks. Yeah, but, but uh, we all do. So we want him to get the grade for the school, and I, I would like the. Like, imagine if the kids were the only ones who did the projects. How would these projects really be? Like, there's probably a kid that his project was really good for his age or for his... But he can't compete with a parent who's an architect. You, you, so And he never let, got the accomplishment. You see, and, you fucked up. That, that's messed you up. You can mess up a kid like that, you know? But if you let them all just do it, yeah, they're all going to come off. And them things are probably going to fall. Yeah, but and, they shouldn't get an F if it comes out bad. Give them an F. An A, you freaking brought it in. But you know why? They'll give a bad grade because they're already used to parents doing the actual project. So they're only expecting. He did get a B on that one. But, yeah, but they're only expecting like like legit things. Because they because of that one parent who did it because he wanted his kid. I, like, I want my kid to get a But it wasn't just one architect in the class. It was two. So you had one that had like this really kick-ass village. And then the other one that the Tiki Hunt had floors. Yeah. And the freaking course had a barn. But what I'm saying is that these, so the parents are doing the work for the kids, but if we let the kids do it, you know, it's going to be, even if it's fucked up, even if they cannot manage, even if they just manage to put two sticks together, I don't know how to do it. Then whose job is that to teach them? A little bit of everybody's. Yeah. And if you're an architect, dad, that's when you teach. Yeah. This is how we're going to build it. We do this. We're gonna do and and do it age appropriate. But I'm, uh, yes, do it age appropriate, man. You guys be coming up. Don't put a freaking damn elevator. He has an elevator. And a freaking tiki hut. <laughs> tiki hut. I think goes up and down. <laughs> but but you know, but maybe your mind thinks differently like that. You know, that's how your mind thinks. Oh man, it's so easy to do an elevator. Look, it's really easy. All you gotta do is just put a little uh, a, a little uh, rope that goes up and down this way. You just add a pulley and. Look, it's that easy. And for him, it's really that easy. But for somebody that's not an architect, somebody that's not an engineer, uh, go find some sticks in the backyard. Hey. Let's put... Hey. But we're not engineers and we're not, and we're not architects, you know? And like for me, creating something with fonts and graphics on it, it, it comes... Oh yeah, you just put this on and it's, it's pretty easy. You didn't think of that easy, look. It's but true, for though. you, it's easy. So every mind thinks differently, but you're being judged on something that you're not really good at. Exactly. It's yeah. true. 
and I don't think it's fair. And I think they should be graded on their effort, not on the the product. Because at the end of the day, when... Hmm, interesting. I'm about to say at the end of the day, when, when you go into the real world, are you rewarded for your effort or are you rewarded for your project? You were, you're rewarded for both. You got to complete the job at a certain And age. not more, yeah. So, yeah, you put a, a lot of effort, but you failed? You failed. You might get fired. If your company lost money, yeah, but I gave it a great effort. Yeah, but it, it wasn't the right effort. I'm paying you to 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 accomplish a, a task for this job, and if you can't do it, listen. If yeah. if you're if if your sole purpose let's, let's go with a with a laborious job is to move tiles from that bunker or that storage over to that storage because you just started in the company, and as you're taking those tiles, you break half of them on your way over there because you don't know how to do the thing. But man, listen, you put a lot of good effort into it. You're gonna get fired. You're not good for the job. Don't fire me. But if there's, there's if, how many how many hundred thousands of people are signing up for unemployment? I know, but you don't listen. If you it doesn't matter if you put effort or not. That's true. So then then we can't teach them that. So it's not effort. You got to do the job. Yeah. And then. But what about the job you really don't want? It's okay because you hire the architect. <laughs> I know, but in school. I know you, they hired the dad. The dad decided. Yeah, but to what about the kids who are not? I, that's what I'm trying to I'm trying to see how we can make it fair but it doesn't seem like we can it's not, it's not fair you're judging people on technique like like, like I, on talent it's like I have a have like talent. I have a a, um, a scenario right for that so you have athletes mm -hmm. pro athletes who they get scholarships to mm -hmm. go to these schools right but they also have to do really good in school in order to maintain to be able to play on the college team mm -hmm. right but the kids that get scholarships for being scientists or for their smarts or for their brains, they don't have to perform on the sports field mm -mm. to make to be able to maintain their scholarship in their smarts field. Because they're academic scholarship. I understand. But my question to you is, why is it a, a, a requisite for a pro athlete to maintain a good standard in something that they're not good at? Exactly. They weren't. And they get punished if they're not. But they don't have, their average has to be a C. I understand. It's like the level. Okay, so then my point's invalid. I mean, you make sense. All I'm saying is why, so why can't we judge them on, why can't they just have, they should be able to at least go to practice and help those guys out. Or are they going to fuck everything up? I'll, I think that if you go to school on a scholarship, like you said, for football, then your main priority there is to work towards football. And you're and you're right. And academics should be the least. It's it's the back burner. That's it. You, there's no. It, it's you just you're still gonna get a degree because we don't want you to be here for four years without getting a degree because you did invest the time. You got a degree in football. But you're gonna get a degree in football. You're not gonna get it in exercise science or psychology or whatever. Now, now, if there's there's athletes out there that do have the brains as well, and you guys want to go to school and you want to go into sports science. While playing football, and you, you can want, do it. Yeah, go for it. Can. Absolutely, go for it. But we don't make the smart kids play tackle yeah, football. That's true. Or right? do or or hey, have to keep a certain amount in. You got that that smart kid, you know, petite. You know, he's just he's not maybe he's not big built because he wasn't given the God given ability to be a six five six seven. You know, uh, freaking power forward or or oh, a defensive guard on the basketball team or a, or a wide receiver on a football team yeah. or, or a soccer team, but he's five five. <laughs> Wait, he? Weighs one hundred and thirty five pounds. Yeah, hey, listen, that's me right. There. You have to be able to score at least a touchdown a game. No, at least a touchdown for the whole quarter. For the whole quarter, so otherwise, you get, so you could get an A. No, or a B or C. Otherwise, you're off the you're your scholarship. That's not fair. Why not? They do it for the basketball team and for the football team. I know. It's not fair either way. I know, but that's what I was saying. I know. And Why, I agree with you. Just get up. Now, if you if you choose to play football, should you try to at least make it onto the football team like everybody else does? Meaning, if you're a science kid, right? Or, yeah. or a smart kid. Now, if you're a, a, a football player or a basketball player or a soccer player, whatever scholarship, baseball player, whatever scholarship you get in sports, and you want to go into, I don't know, uh, 
culinary arts. Mm -hmm. You should have to also apply that you have that passion or that or that gift to be a culinary artist as well, yes, or yes. a scientist, or a doctor, or a de or a dentist, or or you're just gonna get a scholarship, a degree in playing football. That means when you come out of there, you can teach football if you don't make it to the majors. But it's your field, it's your passion, it's what you do. Now, if you're smart enough and you have the, the willpower to, to go into something that requires law, doctor, something like that, and you're still in your football playing, you got to scout, then go ahead and try it out. See, yeah. it should work for both. I agree. Right? That I, I I mean, I agreed the first time. Um, but I don't know. I don't know what they do half the things they do. I don't know And these why. kids are just suffering there in a class that they have no interest for. Their God-given abilities to freaking handle a ball better than the majority of the population or run faster than the majority of the population. I believe they should just be hired from high school. If they're not... Oh, or, if, or, or, if here, they're or, here, or here, or here's the thing. If, how, much, how much money do the schools make on on their on their, on their God-given talent of being athletes yeah. for playing football? Okay, you're coming out of high school. We're not going to give you an education because you really don't want it. No, we're, we're going to put you in the minor leagues. This, it becomes like a minor league. College ball. Yeah. You're old enough. You you can only be between an age of let's say eighteen, 18 and twenty four. Yeah, twenty four the oldest. Right. And throughout this time we're gonna pay you to play college ball. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Because we can't give you a scholarship because you're not What's the point of giving them a scholarship? They don't wanna go to school. They they wanna make money doing that or become pros. And then they have the option. You I, could either get paid or get school. Or get school. What right. do you want? Paid. Okay. Then you get paid. But that's a choice you're willing to make. But they don't give them that choice. And a lot of these kids don't go on to make millions of dollars. No. Their only time to be to to be profitable from their God given talent was during their 18 to 24 because not everybody's gonna make it to the pros. No. There's millions of kids playing football, baseball, basketball, soccer that don't make it. And that would be fair. Because they could save their money and then after that either go to school huh? or have Because enough. they're a little bit older now. Yeah. All right, listen, you know what I now, I was, you know what? I, I was good, but I wasn't pro good. Yeah, and I was, I was, on, I was college good. I was in, uh, I was in this rut thinking out. I mean, in this idea of thinking I was gonna hit the major leagues. I didn't, so now I have to go to school. But fuck, I made, I made a hundred thousand dollars a year. But I, I, I said, I bought a house. I set my family up for the rest of our yeah, lives. We're good. We're, we're good. We're good for a little bit. Or I wasted all my money partying because I'm eighteen years old. But that's your decision. You're an adult. You're listen, if you're allowed, you if you're allowed to vote, if you're allowed to go kill. Kill for this country and be in the military, then you should be allowed to get paid a hundred thousand dollars too. I agree. You can fuck up your life both ways. I agree. I think that's a good point. You can fuck up your life both ways. You can go ahead and go to the military, and you can be that kid that gets blown up by an IED or get shot and killed. You still fucked up your life because yes, you served my country, and I'm fucking thankful because that's something I didn't do. And if you did it, man, I'm proud of you, and I'm thankful for what you did. And if you lost your life out there, man, I'm sorry for your family because this got to be the worst. Thing. But if technically, a life you? a life is still lost. But if you're 18 years old and you go to school and you're making hundred thousand dollars a year because of your God-given talent of play, of playing a a sport and you still fuck up your life, it's still a waste of life. But that kid can also could have been alive, became a general in the military, and become president of the United States. Would that would have been a waste of life? No, it would have been a great career for him. Yeah. Same thing for a kid that makes hundred thousand dollars. Maybe that kid has the right people around them because the right people around them that prior years also went to college. They brought that money back to their hoods, yeah, to their neighborhoods. Now their neighborhoods get a lot better. And then, and then you have just because you have all these college kids going who back. didn't make it to the pros, but they brought that money back and say, you know what, home, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open up a sneaker store. Mm -hmm. You know what, I'm gonna open up a, a, a football school here. Yeah. But I have the money. I have four hundred grand. I see. I, I don't think every kid's gonna go out there and spend all their money. Some of them will. How about teach shit, them? Shit, shit. A lot of, a, a lot of, yeah. But you can't because now you're paying them. That's true. You see, you want to learn? I don't pay you. If you want to go to school because that's what you think is gonna get you ahead in life, and play ball for my university, fine. I don't pay you. Oh, but you're a God-given talent, and I want you my university because I want you to help me sell tickets. You don't want to go to school? I'm going to pay you now. Yeah, and they should get something good. Yeah, man. I listen, a lot of NBA players that come out of college and all pro sports. Tyson did it. He blew his money away. But he still made a name for himself. 
and he's still making a name for himself right now uh -huh. because of his name that he was able to mm -hmm. make he can still provide a living for himself and his family exactly. because of his name because he was can he, could he create a name for himself now at this age absolutely yeah but it's harder oh no of course in the boxing world with his god-given talent of knocking out people yeah because he's done his, his his time is over just he, like a, a a player from coming straight out of high school yeah same thing yeah because now let let's say they get injured man at least i got a hundred thousand dollars yeah Fuck. And at least, you know, and at least I walk out of here with some money and not, not have to figure out what I'm going to do with it. They get paid. Shit happens. They break a leg. They can't play football again. But I got paid $100,000. I agree. You made a bad investment. Eh? I, I I understand. But I was committed to playing for you and becoming as famous and going to the pros and making even more money in the pros. Mm -hmm. I did it. Okay. But I still got $100,000. Now I can go back home and say, fuck. I'm not going to be making another hundred thousand dollars. So Maybe. I need to figure so out. So now what, yeah. I got these hundred thousand dollars and I need to invest them very well. I need to invest them. And now you have other people in his, her community. That would be so nice. Do you know how many people would do good with that money? Ghettos would be less. Of course they would. Cause they'll go back. Not they'll all go, of them, you, but a lot of them will. But a, a good, a good amount would go back. Because the young ones stay around home and they bring that money back. Yeah, to mom. And hopefully mom is smart and she freaking puts it away. Maybe not the first generation. But, but the second, but second and third. The, the first, first generation bl blow blows. <laughs> they blow it because they want to live the big But life, then right? they'll learn. But some of them be like, man, you lost it. And now they teach the kids that are coming back with the money. Say, listen, I was just like you. Don't, Don't do that. Because no. now you have the OGs. Telling them how to invest yeah. their money. If I was you, I would have done this. And I would have invested in this. And I would have done this. Because they had the money. Exactly. But how can an OG that didn't have a pro-life, that went to college, that made the college millions of dollars, millions. came back because he didn't make it to the pros, what advice can he give that kid? None. On money. Go to school. No. Fuck them. Get out of there as quickly as you can and go to the pros. Yeah. Because that's where you're going to make your money. If you can get drafted, go. As fast as you can. As fast as you can. Right? Because you need to make the money as fast as you can. Because you only have a limited it's amount a small of... window. You have a small window, man. Such a small window. And then, so they can't go from... They can't go to football straight into the major leagues? Yeah, they, they can't? Any, anybody could? With football, it's tougher because of the body size and the strength-wise. These kids can get hurt. Okay. So the NFL... But baseball players? Some of them, I think, can. I think there was a rule enacted once... I don't know which which organization, whether it was basketball, football, baseball, but they, they still had to play college ball first. So they still get money out of them before they allow, they're allowed. And then, but you know what? These kids, también, don't sell yourself. Stand up for something different. If every kid was to say, nope, I want to get paid. Then they have to pay. They have to pay them because yeah. otherwise they won't be going to the colleges. If they all get together. And but, they, but they have a trick. You're young. You're coming out of high school, right? You've never had freedom like this. They tour you around the school, and they're showing you. They're not, they show you the campus. They show you the football field, but they also show you the fun life. Everything you're gonna be able to do when you go to those. Look, you have these girls here. They whore them out. They have you have these girls here. You have these parties here. You're gonna be able to do this. You're gonna be able to do this. You're gonna be able and to do this. You're gonna be the star. You're gonna be the star in people. And once you come onto the field, your name is on the bleachers already. People are cheering for you. You hear the, they brainwash them. Of course, just like we were just brainwashed in and that debate for and, an and, hour and, and thirty minutes. And they'll spend a hundred thousand dollars alone on just trying a, to buy them. Try and acquire that kid because how much money is that kid gonna make them? But don't get. You know what? We're gonna have to. That's gonna have to happen. So, if, That's gonna if to these happen. people were to be able to make the money while playing for college ball, that, it'll be a different lifestyle. I bet you their their money will go up because now the NFL will say, "Well, if they're paying for it. I'll pay for it. I'll, pay I'll, for I'll bring them to my team. Absolutely. I'll bring them to my side." Yeah. And then now their stock goes up, but now they only have one in the European leagues. Ah. They can go play in the European leagues. So that's really dope. They do, and they get paid. And there's a lot of college kids that say, fuck this, I'm going to the European leagues, and they get paid out in Europe. And a lot of them, like Kobe Bryant. Yeah, exactly. He, he was, he could, I think. but he's from. No, I'm okay. sorry. No, no. He he went straight from high school to, to the NBA. He did? Yeah, him and, and LeBron James. That's right. They both went from, straight from high school to the NBA. And I think LeBron James was the last one that's allowed to do that. I think you're right. I think so. I, I may be mistaken on that, but... A lot of these kids that say, you know what, F college, I need to get paid now. They go to the European leagues. 
They play out there. So because now you can't do that here in the United States. But once you play in the European League, you can come back. You're out of the college uh, circuit. You cannot play college ball. Of course, because you're already playing with professionals. You're already pro. Technically, you're already pro. You're already getting paid. So once you get paid, that means you're a pro. Ah, so that's probably what they... No, it doesn't matter. They, sh they should still get paid. I think they should get paid. And they should, it should be I called the minor leagues. Do you they, have the minor But they do major? have minor leagues, too. For that age group? They have minor leagues for everything. Yeah. They have the minor leagues. Kids that don't make it to college ball. Because they, they didn't get drafted to college. Yeah. Remember, they make it like they're picking you. Yeah, I know. But the but the the kid actually ends up picking what college they want to go to. And they could and and I, and you know what? Sometimes I wonder. Do you think they make people who are not even that good really famous? You have to show the talent on the court. Yeah. You have to. I mean, you you can mold them. You know. And bring up their confidence. It's like, like there's been people who've been they've been told to the public, listen, this is gonna be the next freaking star. Mm -hmm. We're banking on this person. And they come in and they're a dud. <laughs> they're a dud. Some people f uh, freeze under the lights. It's even happened with the UFC and and like uh, Ben Askren. Mm -hmm. You know, he was coming from the I think from the Pride or or, or another fighting mm -hmm. organization, and he got hyped up, man. And he was hyped. You're a favorite too. Yeah, they, they were doing good back in those days. So Ben Askren, he gets here, he gets to the UFC, he gets knocked out by Jesus. He got he got baptized by Jesus, Masvidal, Jorge Masvidal. Five second, no two second knockout and done. Done. And then Masvidal took over, <sighs> and he skyrocketed. That was the best thing that could have happened to him. You see, with the word, the star that was going to be the star, the next star, you because he was know. amazing, because he got hyped up so much. This is put to fight against this other dude, and the other dude wins. And the other dude wins, and he instead of look how the world works, he was supposed to be the next star. Star, and this kid comes in, knocks him out, and he just. Freaking takes over. Just like you. You guys can make us the next stars. Yeah. And you guys are making us the next star because so, you guys are listening and you guys are watching. So, uh, guys, let's call it a day. It's, we've gone on for a little bit today. I think we've had a great podcast. It was fun. It was fun. I enjoy talking to you guys. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast. That's right, guys. Hashtag KGYT and Booye. Booye. All right. Guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to all our listeners out there from the UK who are listening to us. Thank wow. you for listening. Yes, thank you guys. Tell us if you like our accent. <laughs> <laughs> I think they must. I hope you guys understand our, I know we have different phrases, but thank you for listening to us out there. Um, and we're going to continue doing this great content for you guys. You guys are awesome. Don't forget, if you want to contact us, podcast at kidgotyourticket.com. And of course, uh, follow us on Instagram. Kid got your ticket. That's right. Like us, and our YouTube channel. If you want to, if you want to see the video version of this podcast, Kid got your ticket YouTube channel. All right, guys. Yeah, and make us famous, guys. Give us a like. Oh, bye, guys. Peace.